Oh, just realized that my microphone is out of the you know, shit. Fuck. I'm just bring this over. All right, looks like we are finally here, and it is currently 10.36 p.m. as I actually dozed off after dinner, my apologies. Therefore, you will actually see both the polia and this video come out today while I'm at work, actually. So, let's not, let's not uh, waste any more time. These are the Prince switches, and if I don't know if I can see it, is there any branding on this? There is no branding on this. <laughs> you can tell that there's nothing that shines off of that. Perhaps there's something indicative on the bottom, but I can't really tell. Anywho, print switches are a tactile switch that you can find right now as of, I think, $6 flat? Yeah, you can go on prevailkey.company and you can buy these for six bucks, 10 of them exact and they are a tactile switch tactile switches have really been the what you come to call it the center of attention when it comes to I would say controversy for the last I don't know how many years now because ever since people started going crazy for holy pandas and actual tactility it seems like every switch is being made in the vein of trying to replicate Holy Panda or some form of big tactile, and this is no different. This advertises itself as a Holy Panda-esque switch with a very pronounced bump. And lo and behold, I would say that the marketing is correct. Uh, it is a very interesting switch in which that it kind of reminds me of the Holy Boba that I made or the Boba Polias that I made with the most recent Polia experimentation video where the tactility on these things are actually really sharp. What I mean by that is that there's barely any pre-travel, if any pre-travel at all, but it really fights against your fingers when it comes to actually using the switch. And here, allow me to demonstrate. So. You can tell right here that just by pressing on it, this thing does not want to move at all. And if I put my finger on it, you can see the joint of my finger here. That kind of gauges how much force I need to put on it. And you can see that my finger kind of drops down quite hard. And when it rockets my finger back up, I think this is a good sort of indication, at least visually via, well, a video, how tactile these switches are. I don't think it's anything mind-blowing, like how people reacted to the initial Box Royal release. Uh, but in terms of these switches, the one switch that comes to mind when I actually use these switches are Zeal V2. Because Zeal V2, when he when uh, the second when the molds were out for the version twos, people were either super appreciative of massive gigantic tactility, or they preferred the more elongated and subdued tactility that wasn't going to be benched anytime soon, but it wasn't necessarily the biggest star of the switch action. So when it comes to the switch, I think people that enjoy Zeal V twos will enjoy these switches because not only do these actually outperform Zeal in terms of price, but they actually are better stock. And what I mean by that is that the top housing barely has any wobble. And I'm very, very impressed. Like I'm, I'm just tugging back and forth and I don't feel it wobbling at all because usually Zeal switches, you're gonna have to film them, of course. No matter what version, no matter what round, no matter what batch, people always advocate filming Zeal switches because the top housing has always, for some reason, come very loose. And when it comes to these switches, the tolerances are actually very good. I, I can totally see someone just buying these and using these stock. As a matter of fact, just a very quick test. Let's listen to these with a keycap on. That's really good. I'm smacking this thing, 
and the majority of the sound still comes from the stem and nothing else. So with that being said, why don't we compare directly? So as a matter of fact, I do have Zeal V2s next to me. Here they are. These are 67 gram V2s. And let's just take a look at the tactility real quick. So, first of all, you can already hear the tolerances are looser. So, all right. So there is a little bit of pre-travel here, unlike the print switches, but the tactility is still pretty good. I would say between the two, They are about the same, all things considered. However, the main difference is that this thing has a little bit of pre-travel, while this switch does not. Like, at all. <laughs> so therefore, with the tighter tolerances stock, and the fact that it has no pre-travel, I would assume well, not really assume, but I can conclude that to my tastes, the print sw switch actually has a tad more tactility than a Zeal V2, which is very interesting because usually Zeal is considered the kind of, not golden standard, but it is a household name at this point. Everyone knows what Zealios, V2s, Zealios, Telios, Helios, those are pretty much brand names. I didn't hear anyone not talk about them when I entered the lobby. And it's funny because after, what, two and a half years, I actually don't hear their switches mentioned almost at all, other than reviews such as Hamaji Neo's or Lars's, where either they talk about massive amounts of tactility or perhaps the fact that they are overpriced or whatnot, whatever. But anywho, so if the switch performs this well stock, then it's only natural that we test it with lube and filming, right? So. Parameters set for this experiment, the switch will be lubed with Gazoo's Lube 3G, and it will also be filmed with a 0.125mm TX film, modern generation. So let's get to work. Alright, I just took apart the print switch, and before we go any further, let me just say something, alright? That is a long ass spring. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, hold on. So I have like a couple standard springs here. This is what a standard spring looks like. What? Look how long that fucking spring is. Holy shit. <laughs> At the time of recording this, I'm gonna put this in a community post. <laughs> This is so funny looking. All right, anyway, Jesus, <laughs> goodness. All right, back to looping. finish lubing and filming these. Just for reference, I'll be playing the stock noise first and then the lubed and filmed one after. So here is a stock prints. Here is a stock Zelios V2. And now here is a lubed and filmed print switch. Here is a lubed and filmed Zelios V2. Hmm. 
What's interesting to me is that the print switch doesn't seem to differ much when it comes to the stock form. Uh, let's have a side-by-side -side test, actually. This is the lubed and filmed one, as you can tell by the switch film, and this is the stock one. Stock. And modified. The Zeal Leos is the ones that make the most difference because when you have Zeal stock switches, they actually aren't that great. Surprise, surprise. So, once again, here's a Zeal stock. Here is a Zeal modded. You have to put them side by side. Difference is definitely there. All in all, lube and mod your films, boys. What the fuck did I just say? Welcome to Lopsided Angle, where my tripod is fucking broken. But, as of now, let us switch over to the acrylic switch tester. I purposely switched off the microphone, but the audio should be getting better very soon. So, back again with the acrylic switch tester. Yeah, these switches look a little similar, don't they? Anywho, very simple test. I'm going to be putting the stock switch first and then this loop switch next. And I actually might just be doing a side-by-side -side comparison, even though I don't like that, but I think it'll get the point across. So, uh, by side by side, I mean putting literally two switches on a switch tester. I'll put that at the end of the at, at the end of the single tests. Anyway, so stock print switch going in, and for the keycap of choice, in which I will be testing the sound, I will be using a uh, what's a good what's a good keycap? Shit! I'll be using this little page up keycap made out of PVD dye soap. Cool. Alright, going in. Alright, now putting the keycap on. It already feels pretty good for a stock switch, in my opinion. There's a little bit of a squishiness feel to it, but I'm assuming that's just for factory lube. Here is a lubed and filmed version. All right, putting on the keycap. I'm not expecting much of a difference. These things are pretty good stock, in my opinion. Let's put the stock one right next to it. And do I have another keycap that replicates the same profile? I actually do. Although, it will be a little bit different. I'm gonna switch out the initial keycap for these. All right, take a listen, lads. Stock. Looped. Let's swap positions just to make it consistent and eliminate variables. So, looped first and then stock. Yeah, see? Useless test, because when I put it in the middle, it makes it sound bassier than the one on the left. So, avoid that, please. Just putting the point across that I should never, ever do that again. 
But anyway, let's move on to the zeals. Here is a stock zeal switch, zeal v2. Putting on a keycap now. You can hear that top housing rattle, can't you? All right, let's move to the lubed and filmed one. Putting the keycap on. And here is a quick back and forth of multiple combinations. All right, cool. Well, there you have it. Zeal V2s and print switches. Personally, considering the Zeal V2s are more expensive and require actual modding, except, well, more modding, I suppose, obviously I'm gonna recommend the print switch here. However, someone did come to my attention, sorry, something was brought to my attention, and the actual thing in which that piece, some person brought to my attention was a switch called a white Jade. Uh, the white jade, according to this person by the name of AEXU or A2, <laughs> uh, I quote them saying, as much as how sharp a print switch is, it actually feels rounder in comparison to a white jade. The stem for the white jade is also very long, longer than a prince actually, and considering they have been into long stems, there's barely any post-travel, maybe just a hairline after the tactile bump, which is almost immediate. So it is pretty much a fully tactile switch with barely any pre or post-travel. Sound-wise, it also sounds more crisp than a Prince, but like all high tactile, but like all high tactility switches, it suffers from leaf pings when unlubed. And that is all I had to say on that matter. I personally like where the print switch sits because it is not way too tactile to the point where I feel like I need to really like lube up the lube up the stem, lube the stems to the point of seeing lube on the top housing. But I also obviously don't like very very lightly tactile to the point where I feel like I should have just left the switch unlubed. So in my opinion, the print switch for six bucks is actually not really bad for value, considering six bucks, five bucks, fifty cents is the normal price for a mid-tier switch nowadays, which kind of pains me because the only people that set that standard in place were JWK and Iraq. Kill me. But as of now, I feel that the print switches are actually not bad. And all things considered, whatever the white jade person is talking about. It reminds me of my Holia switch, which is found on my old Coca-Cola keyboards, where there is no pre-travel, you press down once, and there's barely any post-travel. So as for that, I think that covers the review. I'll post a few pictures and such uh, to let you see the difference between the spring lengths in the print switch is compared to a standard spring in another switch and otherwise I think that's it. So I hope this was informative. The next video will be something of another comparison, but it actually is made from the same manufacturers, Duroc. And would you would wouldn't you know, the switches would actually be very vague in name. <laughs> um, they are the Duroc Light Tactile, which you can find a few reviews on and a Duroc medium tactile, which 
Would you believe it? Looks like a zeal switch. <laughs> so this will be interesting because I have tested these lightly outside of filming. And I gotta say, perhaps these were the zeal one replacements that I actually were looking for all this time. But that is enough out of me. Continue to have a great week. And I hope everyone has a very nice summer. Stay hydrated, stay cool. And I hope to see you in the next video.